Mm. It's so interesting to think about here, and we could think and talk about this forever. Um, so there's so much here, but we do. I do want to fast forward here to the flood, because um, this is another one of these big questions that people have: is um, what was this flood like? What's going on here? And then there's the age old question of like, did the flood cut, cover the whole earth? Did it cover part of the earth? Um, it's interesting because like me growing up in like, my little evangelical bubble, I never knew that there were people that believed that the flood only covered part of the earth. Um, so like, what do you think about like what's going on here in the flood account and stuff, stuff along those lines with that story? Well, I think textually, theologically, it's very clear what the text is talking about. The flood is a recreation account. Mm. We could track that point by point. Um, that's what it's serving as in the book of Genesis and its theological role. It's a reset button, resetting order. The text doesn't even talk about it in Genesis as God's judgment. Mm. Everything has become disordered because people are doing it their way. And God is resetting order. Now, for that, you don't need to know how much ground the flood covered. And mm -hmm. the text doesn't tell you. And some people say, wait, 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 wait. Chapter 7, read it. It uses this universalistic language, verse after verse after verse at the end of chapter 7. That's important to observe. Question, is that universalistic language supposed to be read rhetorically? or scientifically. Now again, you don't get to just pick the one you like. If the author intended it rhetorically, then follow this, then a literal reading of the text reads it rhetorically. Right? I mean, that's how rhetoric mm -hmm. works. Think about the parables. Parable is a form of rhetoric where you tell the parable. Now, if you said, well, I'm going to read that literally and I'm going to find the Good Samaritan and I'm going to interview him about the, the whole thing. Well, you're not reading the text literally because you're not taking account of its genre and its rhetoric. Literal reading of the text always reads it the way that the author intended it to be read. So before you can claim literal reading, you have to ask whether the author intended this language to be rhetorical in nature. That would be the best reading to account for whatever rhetoric. If he meant it scientifically, fine. But of course, we're not inclined to think that the Bible is speaking scientifically. So what, what are the alternatives here? Well, we have numerous places in the Old Testament. Um, I've documented these in Lost World of the Flood um, that talks about all of this. Numerous places in the Old Testament where universalistic language is used rhetorically in the context of major cataclysms or catastrophes. Think about the famine that uh, Joseph was involved in. Seven years of plenty of food, seven years of famine and drought. And Genesis 41:57 tells us, all the world came to Joseph for food. Universalistic language in a major catastrophic context. Does anybody try to explain how the American Indians got across the Atlantic or how people from Australia came across and how all the world, every single one of them appeared before Joseph? No one does that. Hmm. They recognize that it's rhetorical. You read Zephaniah chapter one, it describes a total destruction. Birds, beasts, plants, all people, everything, universal under heaven. It's talking about the exile and the destruction of Jerusalem by Babylon, which didn't include every person, didn't include all the animals. The universalistic language in a context of cataclysm is rhetorical. Lamentations 2, same deal. Time after time, in contexts of cataclysm, universalistic language is used rhetorically. Hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that the flood was not global. 
but it does mean that you can't claim the Bible demands that the flood was global. Mm. If its rhetoric gives other options, then it does not demand it. Now, you might say, so do you think that the flood was local? I didn't say that. Do you think it was regional? I didn't say that. I don't know mm. how, how massive the flood was. It was massive. But I don't know. The text doesn't tell us because all it does is use the rhetoric of universal language, which doesn't tell me how extensive it may have been. Mm. I've got to think it was pretty extensive, but I don't know. The text doesn't tell us. Thank you.